Hey everybody, welcome to Cover Creations. My name's Gareth, this is my little corner of the internet, playing with my food. Today I'm going to make something long-winded for you in sound, but uh, not long-winded in making, if that makes any sense. So this is my tomato, basil and goat's cheese soda bread. Quite a mouthful. Might have to change that for the titles onto YouTube, it might be a bit long. But we're going to go with it. It's really nice, kind of tear and share soda bread. Yeah, wonderful stuff. So very, very simply, we're going to just kind of get our ingredients together for this one. So you're going to want 80 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. And we're just going to chop those up quite small. So kind of into like little slivers like that. And don't go too small because you don't want it everywhere. All we want is nice little bites where you just get all of that kind of bit of flavour here, bit of flavour there. Some bits will be stronger, some bits won't. Love it like that. So we're going to chop up those Tom. Okay, so tomato's done. Now the basil. You're going to want and get out a 30 gram kind of pack of basil you get down the supermarket and all I'm going to do is pull off the really thick bits of the stalks like so and we're going to chop this down what's left of the stalks all the flavors there as well so keep those in I'm just going to roughly chop these there we go we don't want them chopped down too much you're going to have like you know, some lumps are reasonable size, but they're going to wilt down as this cooks. So don't worry too much. Nice and rustic, this one. You will end up with basil all over your hands, though. The last thing we need to do for this bit is goat's cheese. Now, you can use any other cheese for this if you want. You know, any kind of hard cheese. I wouldn't go any softer than a kind of rinded goat's cheese, um, just because... It'll just get too runny and it'll almost be impossible to mix it in but i love the flavor of this so we're going to use goat's cheese for this one try and do it when it's cold it'll stick together a bit more but there we go just got that kind of rinded goat's cheese so not the crumbly one you just want to chop this down into little nuggets each one probably about that size so size of your good thumbnail really So there we go, that was easy, and last time I did it, I tried to do this in the height of summer. The goat cheese just got so melty, it was almost impossible to work with. So there's our main ingredients. Well, I say main ingredients, that's not gonna make a bread, is it? But those are gonna be the ingredients that are gonna add all this beautiful flavor in. So those ingredients done, get them out of the way, and then time to start putting together the soda bread. So grab yourself a bowl, and into that, we're just gonna sift in 420 grams of plain flour. I have probably overfilled this and it's going to go everywhere. Oh no, we're winning. All right, let's go. Right, so flour's in. Next thing, bicarbonate of soda. So you want one teaspoon of this. And this is going to give it that kind of rise and means you don't have to worry about yeast and proving and all of that kind of stuff. And this is, was one of my first forays into baking. I'm not really big on my baking, but I love making these breads. They're just really so much simpler than waiting for things to prove and stuff like that. Love it. So again, just going to sift it in there. Just gets rid of all of the little lumps push that through lovely and then a teaspoon of salt so we're going to pop that in now I've tried sifting salt doesn't work so work out about how much a teaspoon is and then just crumble it in perfect so now that's done we're just going to mix that through I'm just going to use my hands part of the fun of baking isn't it playing around with it you go. get that all mixed in lovely and then we're just going to make a little well in the center and then to that we're going to add buttermilk so you want 300 ml of buttermilk here 
which is fully planned as it's exactly the same size that they actually sell down the supermarket for me. So that's kind of where I've worked everything to. Saves wasting stuff. Just gonna pop in that buttermilk or if you can get it out. There we go. Now roll up your sleeves, definitely roll up your sleeves and get your hands in there. Get it all mixed around. We're gonna create that dough. That's great. Now it's mixed in slightly, we can tip the rest of our ingredients in. So it's still kind of just starting to come together. And we're just gonna pop those in. And what this will allow it to do is those, I've lost a bit of cheese. No. Oh. I'll pick that up later. And yes, I probably will eat it. So putting them in now, like giving it a slight mix up first, just means that they're gonna stay a bit more separate. And when they, you get, especially with the cheese, if you put it straight in with the flour before it started kind of glooping with that buttermilk, you end up with kind of a load of bits sticking together. And then you don't get it spread out as well. So at this point, you're just gonna mix it all together and kind of bring it together into that dough. You go and gradually that will come together now until you've kind of got one lump and then what you've got is a nice lump of soda bread right lump of soda bread all ready to go best point which you may have forgotten which i've forgotten right now turn your oven on so you want to crank that up to 180 degrees centigrade and that will kind of warm up, ready for you to shove this in. And then what you're gonna to need to do, grab yourself a tin of any kind, any kind of baking tin will do. I'm using a flan tin because of it's clean. And that's basically the only decent reason. And then you might need a bit more flour. So just dust the base a bit slightly. And then you might want a little bit on the side because I put too much in the pan. Just to get a little bit on your hands. Makes kind of rolling this out easier. Like I said, we're gonna make a tear and share bread here. So instead of making, you can just grab this, one lump, whack it in the middle, stick it in the oven. Perfect. But I kind of like doing this with little balls. Thinking about bigger than a golf ball, smaller than a tennis ball. You want to kind of get all of these even and just pop them in there and each one's going to create like this little bun that people can rip off and kind of dig into really cool so there we go i've made a complete mess but i've got all of these lovely little buns and then we're just going to arrange them really you want them touching because as they grow in the oven just make sure any little bits aren't sticking out the edge. They'll kind of fuse together. And that's when you'll get this kind of large loaf with all these little buns, you can just pull bits off. So any pattern you like. Of course I've got an odd number. <laughs> that happen. <laughs> that will always happen. Let's rearrange. So there we go, gone for a weird kind of cone shape. Just make sure that they're together, but you don't want to actually squeeze them together. You just want them sort of nestled up against each other. And like I said, that's as easy as the soda bread is really. So now we're just going to whack it straight in the oven, 180. We're going to leave it there for 45 minutes. It takes a little while to cook these, but the end result, absolutely brilliant and well worth it. So whack these in. Okay, so while that's doing, time to do a bit of clean up. I have made a proper mess. That's not unheard of here. It, it's uncovered in flour. Really shouldn't have worn <laughs> the red shirt. But while I'm doing that, just wanna say thanks so much for getting this far into the video. If you could think about subscribing to the channel or leaving a like or a comment, 
That would just really help that engagement, really help me kind of get these videos out there, you know, put a load of effort into them, and we'd like more people to be able to see them, really. So I can only do that with your help. If you could leave one of those things, that would be fantastic. If not, don't matter. <laughs> I'll catch you in 45 minutes. Okay, so 45 minutes later, see what we got. Oh, please be good. Oh, yes. Hello. That is exactly what I was looking for. So you've still got those kind of like bun shapes on the outside, on the outside, all through it. And then you can see how easy it would be just to tear these things off. So now we're gonna try and transfer it onto a cooling rack. Now let's hope it's strong enough to do that, which it is. So there we go. Perfect. Absolutely really happy with that one. Wonderful. So now we're just going to leave that. So give it 30 minutes on that rack, just cooling down before we sort of tuck in really. So bring it back in 30 minutes, show you what we got. Okay, so there we are, half hour later, it's had time to cool down so it's edible. Um, I'm not gonna burn your mouth to bits, especially with the hot cheese in there. That would just like, ow, instant. So that is my lovely tear and share tomato, basil, and goat's cheese soda bread. So all we need to do now is give it a go. So that tears off lovely, and you can see like little chunks inside of Kind of bits of goat's cheese and the basil running right through absolutely delicious so yeah just just eat it as is or we'll spread a little bit of chutney on it or something like that absolutely fantastic so there you go i hope you enjoyed that i do hope you give it a go and i'll catch you next time cheers mm. that's really good mm -hmm. You can't not like that. It's delicious.